everybody, this is Jace with Arm US, and I'm joined with John McBride, McBride. Yeah. from Autel. Yep, you know who I am. That's right. <laughs> and today, if you can't already tell, we're talking about the new Evo Max. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And this is something that, since it was announced, it was announced at CES, mm -hmm. and everybody has been craving more information, because there's a lot of stuff, which we'll get into in a little bit, mm -hmm. that actually hasn't really been integrated into an aircraft like this before. True. So lots of new features, lots of exciting stuff that people are really eager to learn about, to find out about. Mm -hmm. um, well, you brought up the introduction at CES, and like I said, that is a great stage in order to kind of show. So there is a lot of you know videos of initial stuff, but as mm -hmm. we go a little bit further along, uh, with this development cycle and kind of what we're what we're looking at to see how it works, it's great to kind of discuss this because that right. you know not, not a lot of that is out there. Just the conceptual ideas, but kind of get a little bit more into like why did we do something and where we are with it. So I think that's kind of a good yeah, little breakdown bit of, of little what bit this of, will be. A little bit of clarification, but yep. also um, wow, that sounds really cool. But what does that actually that, mean? That's right. So we'll yeah. get into that. But for initially, let's just kind of cover the bases real mm -hmm. fast. So there's the aircraft itself. There has been a lot of questions about its size. Mm -hmm. And this, if you're familiar with the Autel line uh, and the Evo 2, the you know, V2, V3, mm -hmm. you know, this is just marginally larger, a little yep. bit chunkier. And as we call you put it, we it, call right? it chunky. Yeah, I think that's an internal thing of like, what is it really, you know, it's a little bit chunkier, not so much bigger than you would mm -hmm. expect it to be, but well, you know, not as big as some of the other competition that's out there. Well, it's not quite as large. Right. Um, and so, and, and the big thing that is, this is still very extremely portable, mm -hmm. but we still have the option for the smart remote, mm -hmm. right? And this carries over some other cues from the um, from the Evo line. That's like right. For one, is that we mentioned today is swappable camera payloads. So That's right. Stuff should be coming into the future, and it's very simple. Couple screws with mm -hmm. the connection. It's not even a ribbon cable anymore. No, it's, it's like just a, that it, much it, yeah, more being simple that to simple, be able to do you that. You know, just a couple screws, and like I said, it's you know the idea that on the original Evo Two uh, line was to have swappable payloads. That was mm -hmm. a very you know not known concept. A lot of people didn't even know that. Not was, for an aircraft you know, that size. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So staying traditional with this kind of idea, mm -hmm. it's a possibility. So this this payload we call the Four T. Four implying that we have four sensors up on the front end. We have the the thermal sensor as well, and a tw ten times optical zoom, laser rangefinder, mm -hmm. wide camera. Kind of, um, kind of the 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 specs of an imager that we expect. Yeah, and right? the initial release. So when some people do see four T as the payload combo, they're like, well, that's not what I really want. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So uh, in the pipeline, we do have a lot of expectation to do some other payloads that might kind of drive towards, sure. you know, maybe mapping better, maybe doing even better thermal imagery, mm -hmm. just, just a lot of different things that we can go, different avenues because we have the ability to change that payload. Right. And, and I mean, additionally, as far as the hardware itself goes and, and discussing this again, it's the stuff that we expect from aircraft like this. We mm -hmm. have an F we have a beacon, an FAA compliant, be compliant beacon mm -hmm. already integrated into the aircraft. Correct. We have the obstacle avoidance, which we'll talk about more in detail. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but it has all of those things that we expect. Additionally, you guys have made some incremental steps uh, with communication between the aircraft, mm -hmm. right? So a little bit longer transmission distance. They're that's right. Specking up to twelve miles. Skylink three. Skylink so 3. yeah. 0. So just that's a, that's a very you know uh, you know as we grow and kind of kind of continue to do you know you're increasing that fidelity between mm -hmm. pilot and aircraft. So you know being able to penetrate and or get to distance, people always think, you know, how far does it go? But mm -hmm. when you're really trying to get a good communication path to even short distances, that's really important for any any type of mission specific. Right, right. And then again, know, it's use. it's kind of the, those incremental steps. So with those yeah. bases covered, um, again, it is is one of the things, the things that set this apart. And speaking of the obstacle avoidance, let's talk about that just a little more. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the configuration of this is maybe a little bit unique, what people expect. The one thing I noticed when it came out of the box was, oh, there's no sensors on the sides. That's right. But we have this 720 degree obstacle avoidance. And what they mean by that is, is we have this way as well as this yeah. way. So 360 around mm -hmm. the, the front, 360 uh, around, around the, the side. side. So yes, you would you would not have to have the typical visual uh, um, cameras that we have 
we're using a 360 camera right. to be able so to we've, see around that area. We've got these two sensors on the top, yep. which, you know, they do look different than the ones on the front. They've got the kind of round thing, yep. if you're familiar with 360 degree cameras. That's right. You know, a combination of two lenses. So we have two on the top. There's also two on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the idea and the methodology behind that. Correct. And, and that's one portion of it, and it's allowing... Um, some more stuff with some kind of auto avoidance and navigating its way through difficult environments. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to that, it's not just this. I mean, this is the type of avoidance. And if you've operated at night, you've maybe experienced this where you've had an issue. Hey, your obstacle avoidance might not be available, but you guys have another trick up your sleeve. <laughs> yeah. that, that's kind of, if you'll pardon the pun, flown under the radar yeah. uh, for this, for obstacle yeah. avoidance. So talk about so that. So we have bit. the millimeter wave radar. That is a new, I would say, on small UAS concept. Mm -hmm. um, this driving this and putting this into the into the aircraft does answer the question of can I fly at night with standard optical avoidance? Well, just like normal cameras, just like your eyes, you'll have a difficulty being able to see where it needs to go, and so does the drone. Mm -hmm. Adding this extra sensor in there kind of a, kind of helps out with a front and rear uh, capability, not on the sides, we're not trying to do anything, but it's really spe you know designed to kind of assist us in making decisions sure. in a low light condition environment. Right, well, and, and it's something that to me, I have a hard time complaining about because a lot of systems, it's just like, that's not available. Yeah. And the other thing is, uh, you know, for me, my always caveat is fly assuming that it's not there, yeah. but it's great to have that extra security yeah. um, in those types of situations. Well, and then, you know, we, we, we also look at, you know, trying to take away kind of a little bit of the pilot responsibility. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we already know that some people will put these into places that we probably shouldn't and you're hoping the drone will help them protect it from doing mm -hmm. anything bad. So, mm -hmm. you're, you know, that's kind of the idea. But as always, we use obstacle avoidance as a secondary system to an already, I'm a pilot, I know where I'm flying, we may have some problems if we encounter this and hopefully the drone can manage that. Right. You know. Right. And, and, but again, taking that a step further, we talked about that, uh, you know, terrain avoidance and that kind of stuff, a little, a little more advanced in that feature. Mm -hmm. But the other thing this is enabling and, and what's been doing is, is a GPS denied type of yes. environment because of the advanced sensing and the way that it's doing this. Um, it's kind of combining a lot of elements from other things we've seen and putting them into one yeah. package. So that GPS denied is can be a massive yeah, thing. Yeah, not even just GPS denied, but when you're talking like interference issues with any type of environment, it's another problem is like, you know, how do you, we've, we've always learned from early experiences that, you know, some people automatically want to hit the return to home if they're having a disconnect issue. Mm -hmm. That could be disconnect between the radio and, and the drone, but it can also mean that they're having challenges with GPS. Mm -hmm. And without GPS, how, how do I air, return yeah, to home? How do I get home? So that's a real that's a real challenge, and and the auto button of you know just come home because I'm having a problem is kind of helps solve this to some degree. Mm -hmm. So you know when we're looking at GPS denied areas or or air areas that might be high interference power lines and things like that, um, even to some in some cases you know an anti jamming you know stuff, mm -hmm. this can be. Uh, used in that. This technology is hopefully helping in that scenario. Environments that, that have environment. traditionally been seen as really difficult, if not maybe impossible to yeah. operate in. This is just, again, kind of that, it's that just another incremental step that makes it just that much nicer yeah. and we're advancing, the, we're, we're the, taking the next The evolution the of the industry is moving exactly. forward and, you know, we don't, we, don't, we don't want to always say we're the first at doing something, but when you really look at things that are the first, of course, there's always trial and error to be the first and mm -hmm. try to do things first. And then when you actually build that foundation and build on top of that, mm -hmm. that's where we, we come along with the Evo 2, you know, from all the way back to kind of move on into this direction. Right, so. right. Well, and speaking of some firsts, there are legitimate firsts uh, in this line. And one of those is a single battery hot swap. Yeah. I mean, I don't know every drone that, that exists out there, but as far as I know, that's really a first in this type of market where yeah. One battery being able to do the hot swap, that's a first and, and is unique to this aircraft, at yeah. least as it stands right now. Unique to the aircraft. And again, what is the what is the resolve? You know, why are we trying to do something like that? Well, as we know, powering down, powering back on does take a minute to reset. And when you're in a very high demanding, high emergency situation, just need to get it down, change. Time critical. It, yeah, it's that that's that's the option here mm -hmm. is to being able to do that instead of physically shutting it down, turning it back on, reconnecting, establishing GPS, making sure 
you know, you can you can kind of increase that time, or at sure. least at least improve the time. Right, and that, and and as part of that, it's kind of related to that. Is I love the single battery setup. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's one battery to manage instead of two. Yeah. Um, it should be cheaper to be able to yeah. buy more, not sets of batteries, but be able to continue operating is mm -hmm. a little marginally cheaper and a little bit easier to manage. Mm -hmm. uh, not to mention, you know, if you have an issue with one battery, you need a, a, as a pair, you need no, to replace totally them true. both. You know, you know, have this that on throws the... that out the window, Absolutely. which is really nice. Absolutely. Um, so uh, I like that. I really appreciate it. I yeah. think it's a little bit underrated. But where you're talking this, and, and this is kind of the key, the, the, big, the big boy that's been on everybody's mind, is being able to hot swap and being able to integrate with the mesh network, um, which yeah. you know, we'll talk about that in detail. But yeah. I see this just wrapping up the hot swap thing. Well, if I'm integrated with other aircraft and I don't have to shut down and then try to relink with yes. the network, that's going to make that workflow so Perfect. much more simple no, than, that's... oh, he powered down and he has to come oh, back. and blinked you know, off the screen. Let's wait a minute till John's back on this black on the screen. So mm -hmm. yes, this is absolutely coincides with this next, you know, what we're going to talk about a little bit of the A-Mesh. Right. So, the, and again, this has been the big thing is people say, Mesh? Well, I've never seen that before. Yeah. I've never integrated. What, what do they mean? And, and sometimes people, your mind can go a mile a minute. Well, is yeah. it this? Is it that? So let's, well, let's, let's kind of let's talk, let's about, talk that. about what yeah. it is. So Mesh is what, what we want to make sure that we're clear on is that, you know, even though you can do command control to multiple drones, we do this in air shows when we're doing, mm -hmm. you know, firework, you know, stuff, you know, displays. We see that. displays mm -hmm. that this is one communication moving multiple drones together. We do have other manufacturers that are capable of doing this as well, kind of mm -hmm. having software that, that moves the drone together. Mm -hmm. However, what the thing was is that we're not just doing command and control, we're also moving information between each of the drones. Mm -hmm. uh, that would imply that if I have my remote and I'm piloting from a position that I can select and look at another pilot's screen, not in the command control, but I can see where they are. And if we're looking at like more of a tactical situation, this could be really important to be like, I'm observing here and I know, well, maybe I need to move just a little bit more to the left, a little bit more to the mm -hmm. right to keep to, to get a, a full field of yeah, view. Yeah, to get a field. Or, and I wouldn't know that unless I saw what the other pilot was seeing. I well, wouldn't unless know Unless you're where the old position. way of, hey, can you see over yes, here? Your radios call, or that's phones right. call or me something on the phone. like that. Mm -hmm. So add that, you know, you, you obviously need more than one system mm -hmm. to be communicating on the mesh. So it doesn't really help to have a one-to-one. -one. But we do want to understand that, like, if we also need to extend distance and operational distance that we can have pilots separated out pretty far. I'm thinking and we of can a, still a relay have, style. That's type right, of kind of thing. that general idea is to have multiple communication paths. What is some of the information we're looking for outside of video? We're looking for telemetry data. We're looking for well, um, I, being able to communicate with each other. Like you said, phone call or maybe texting each other of like, this is where I'm at. This is, this is the... The guy that fell down the mountain, this is where he is, pinpoint. Yeah, Everybody you drop the pins. That, so you, so you see, I mean, again, you don't have to go that far to say, okay, we've got three or four aircraft in an area and we're searching for somebody and I'm going to drop a pin. Where are you at? I'm going to drop this pin. Oh, hey, look at yeah, this yeah. site. Everybody we can sees all it. converge yeah. on the this IC, site. That's where uh, the, it should uh, be. You know, the incident control mm -hmm. guy can, you know, the, the command center can see that. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to do this while not being connected on to a network, to a network is, right. is we're localized we're able to communicate with the drones we're able to do all that so when you're looking at like you know tornadoes when you're looking at knocking down infrastructure that's very difficult to try to communicate now we have a very localized communication path that doesn't require you know, having to send out on the internet and send it back to a, a command or something like that. I'm going to put it this way, a proprietary system that is already integrated into the that system. It's not a third party. That's right. It's not reliant on internet in any way. That's this right. It's all integrated. And in short, this allows multiple operators a more effective way of communicating with each other mm -hmm. during a complex operation. Yeah. Um, and, and we're, we're you can take that and run with integrate it. Integrate more, you know, when you look at the ecosystem to do this, you know, we're just talking right now, we're, we're specifically talking about this remote, that drone, but when we're talking about smaller devices that we also talked about at CES, um, you know, devices connecting to that, Dragonfish may be connecting to that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of connections yeah. that need to happen. And, I think we're scratching you know, the surface of what this type of tech is yes. going to bring to these types yeah. of operations. Yeah. But even as it stands right now, it's really cool. Like, yeah. I don't know how else to put yeah. it. It's so a so really even as a cool standalone unit, you know, when you're talking about it being a standalone unit where I just have my drone, 
I, you know, I just have my remote. You know, we do have the the standard smart controller, which everybody's very comfortable with. That's been out there on the on the releases. We do have an enterprise app that will be slightly different than the Explorer app or the Voyager oh, it's app. It's got some more advanced A functionality, more advanced so you'd that expect they're that. kind of specific to mm -hmm. this as well as is operating under the mesh communication. Mm -hmm. So a lot, lot of great advances here that we're sure. you know wanting to introduce to the market. Um, you know, expected to to you know kind of kind of the, the flow of this of, of creating engineering and making like I said is all a lot of news mm -hmm. and uh, the new is uh, is for us to take our time to make sure it's right so I don't want to rush anything out there and get it out there and then all of a sudden have you know a half-baked product we want to be able to right. and then we're always able to build on top of that so mm -hmm. you know that's the, I, the general I, I fully expect I mean it's not like the bucket is gonna st it's not gonna stop here yeah. We yeah. fully expect to see more out of this, but I mean, really, those are the kind of the highlights of that, the big points. And again, I think, I hope that we've kind of covered those those big lingering questions that mm -hmm. people have like, well, what, what the heck does that actually mean? How does that actually work? Oh, also so, remote ID compliant. Don't uh, yes. forget, there don't everybody forget to know that we will be that. <laughs> and, so. and it is already on the FAA declaration of compliance that's list right. you can get online and look it up right now yeah. so that's a um, great one you know because that is a very common question but mm -hmm. you know we have we, again lots of new technologies lots of new things hopefully this will be you know a flagship to some degree the mesh is going to be a, a, a bring to the operation a, a bit more um, and kind of spread out the ability to do a lot more uh, with Autel product lines you know that that right. work and mesh with each other Right. You know, well, so. uh, this sounds silly, but honestly, I'm really excited for like the opportunity in the not too distant future. Um, we can start getting our hands on these and you know demonstrate this practically mm -hmm. in a field like, hey, mm -hmm. let's set up a scenario. I'd love to be able to do that and and be able to bring that video. You and to everybody you and just, else. Oh, yeah, you everybody know, else, I mean, right? we're talking specifically. <laughs> a lot of the end users seeing right. all of this. They're ready. Mm -hmm. They're they're excited to see technology like this coming. So for yeah. for all your current customers and everyone else that would. You know, be excited for that. Obviously, I'm excited to show you a little bit sure. of that as well. And and, so. and this, um, I mean, it's generating a lot of very positive buzz. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are very excited about it. So we're definitely going to bring you more content on mm -hmm. that. But I just, it's something that people have been starving for for quite a while. Yeah. Thank you for coming in and You're kind welcome. of shedding some light on this uh, on this new tech. That again, I mean, we're definitely going to dive. This isn't going to be the end of it. We're going to dive deeper into it and really bring you guys some great content. Mm -hmm. Um, so that we can demonstrate these things so that you can see those practically. So thanks again for coming in. Absolutely. And of course, not only this, but any other drone and robotics technology to stay up to date, the best way to do it is to stay subscribed to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you on the next one.